My name is Brock Perlmutter, and I'd like to tell you about a bug that we encountered in allowing derivatives of higher order functions. This work is part of a sustained effort to make automatic differentiation robust, performant, general, and ultimately ubiquitous, and of course correct. It should be as easy to take a derivative as it is to take a square root or write a loop. That means programmers should be able to take derivatives of anything whose derivative makes sense. So, derivatives of functions which themselves take or return functions, like solving an ODE or the derivative of map. And, of course, we want to take derivatives of functions which internally take derivatives, so we want to allow nesting. Let me set up what we need to explore this issue. I'll review our notation and terminology for forward automatic differentiation, although the same issue crops up in all other modes, we'll use forward for clarity. Then I'll talk about classic perturbation confusion and how it's avoided using tags. We'll think about derivatives of higher order functions and see how allowing them breaks the one-to-one -one correspondence between invoking derivative operators and taking derivatives, thus allowing this bug. After that's all unpacked, we'll look at ways to address the problem. In forward automatic differentiation, derivatives are piggybacked on primal values. So we have x plus x prime epsilon, x is the primal, x prime is the derivative value called a tangent. This is like a dual number, like a complex number inside the computer, it's represented as a two-element pair. These are propagated according to the rules of calculus, and we have an operator for extracting the epsilon coefficient, the tangent, of an output. I'll show how this is used to perform forward automatic differentiation on a simple but topical function. Let's say f of t is 1 over 1 plus e to the minus t. We define the operator d to take the derivative of f at a point x by feeding x plus epsilon into f, extracting the tangent of the output. We can take f of 2 to get 0.881. We can take the derivative of f at 2. We take f of 2 plus epsilon, crank that through. We get 0.881 plus 0.105 epsilon. We extract the tangent to get the derivative of 0.105. This function is uh, also the solution to Verhulst's epidemic equation. The derivative is a rate of infection. So, if you, did you really think you could go a whole talk with a coronavirus? It used to be that nesting was a niche idea, but many applications demand nesting. When done in frameworks that don't support it, programmers end up going through all kinds of crazy hoops to get nesting working. Sed scripts to patch source code between multiple passes through preprocessors, manual closure conversion, all kinds of heroic technical debt creating shenanigans. We want it to be natural. Here's some simple nesting. d takes a derivative at a point. On the left here is conventional mathematical notation for a nested derivative. Notice how much nicer the functional notation on the right is. Regular calculus is better with lambda calculus, right? Look at the definition of d. Now there's this fresh thing that there wasn't before. That means we get a fresh epsilon every time we invoke d. So that nested invocations have different epsilon tags, and so their tangents don't collide. That's critical to getting the right answer. When I say epsilon i, or a different tag, these might be implemented in lots of different ways, like by nested structures with existential types for safety, or a variety of other techniques. We're abstracting all that away and just saying tag, different epsilon tags, different indices. Recent formulations often still get this wrong. For some of them, it's out of scope. You can't even express nesting. For others, they crash or get the wrong answer. The phrase higher order automatic differentiation is used in a bunch of different senses in the literature. When we use it here, we mean the hard one. This first definition, taking derivatives of higher order functions, not plain old higher order derivatives, and not derivatives of first order functions defined using higher order operators. What is meant by the derivative of a higher order function? Well, in part that was the motivation for the development of the whole field of differential geometry uh, hundreds of years ago. But let's give a simple example, a binary curried function. So f of x, y equals x squared plus blah blah blah. We can take f at the point 5 and get a function from y to 25 plus y cubed blah blah blah. We can take the derivative of f at 5, and we'll get the partial derivative of f with respect to its first argument. 
So I'll map from y to the derivative of that expression with respect to x at the point x equals 5 and y. I'm ignoring derivatives of functions whose domain is a function. Read the paper for that. In order for this to go through, we're going to have to extend the derivative operator. Well, not the derivative operator itself, whose definition remains the same, but its type. And also, we have to extend the tangent operator. The tangent operator op operates on numbers the same way, but on functions by post-composition. OK, now we're in a position to do something very disturbing or quite amazing, depending on whether you like to build large correct artifacts or enjoy watching slow motion train wrecks. So I'm going to define an offset operator s. It takes an offset u and a function f and returns f offset by u. Now I'm going to define d hat to be the derivative of s at the point 0. If we look at d of f at x, we expand things out, turn the crank, and we get f prime of x. Similarly, if we take d hat of f at x. We expand out the definition of d hat, turn the crank, and we get f prime of x. So we should have d hat equals d. But if we use them in a nested fashion, d is operating correctly on a scalar function h, takes a second derivative. But d hat gives us a constant function 0 when used in this nested fashion. What happened? Well. The fresh triggered when d was invoked. But the thing is, ds of 0 returned a, a value which has a single tag in it, a single concrete tag. So when it's nested, we can get a collision. That's really bad. OK, I'll unpack. That's the dirty laundry of higher order automatic differentiation. Now let's get to the bottom of this mess. What's the root cause? No, d was invoked once in the definition of d hat, but we can still get nested derivatives. And that's because derivatives of higher order functions breaks the one-to-one -one relationship between invoking a derivative operator and taking a derivative. It's like those corny jokes about engineers and accountants traveling with fewer tickets than people by hiding in the loo when the conductor comes to check tickets. There's a disconnect between allocating the tags and using the tags, and we have poor enforcement of the one tag per nested derivative calculation policy. The key issue is that we need to distinguish the tangents, the tags, for different derivatives, even though the different de derivative operator is called only once. If we don't, we get perturbation confusion. Here's an idea for a workaround. We would have gotten the correct result if d hat had been left unreduced. So instead of writing that expression at the bottom where we use d hat twice, we could define d hat twice and use the two different definitions. That would be OK, except it's manual and horrible. We want programmers to just take derivatives and get the right answer and not have to worry about what's under the hood. So here's an idea for accomplishing this more transparently. We could use eta expansion. We would delay the fresh until all the arguments needed for post-composition of tangent are available, so it immediately beta reduces to a non-function containing value. So we'd have separate versions of d for scalar functions, binary curried functions, etc. This could also be accomplished using polymorphic recursion although that gets hairy when the lang underlying language gets more complicated. Here's another idea. What's going wrong is that the value passed into the function whose tangent is being taken might have the same tag that's in play in that function. So we could augment it with a wrapper to guard the tag in the function so that if it occurs externally, the external one gets renamed away and then renamed back after being passed through. OK, take home message. We can import the standard definitions of derivatives of higher order functions into automatic differentiation, but allowing them breaks the automatic differentiation machinery. Now, it might be a stretch to call this the amazing bug. It's a pretty crowded field, but I hope you'll agree that it's an amazing bug. We have some ideas for solving this, and I propose two solution frameworks. One is based on eight expansion, and the other is on renaming tags away and then renaming them back when they're passing through uh, the tangents of closures. 
recent formulations of forward of automatic differentiation still often get this wrong. For some it's out of scope, others get the wrong answer. The two solutions that I proposed, they solve the correctness issue, but they do have some issues with complexity. So we would like to, to work on this some more to get the efficiency right, both constant factor efficiency and these solutions, implemented naively at least, would seem to break some of the complexity guarantees that we'd like to make in automatic differentiation. Thank you for listening. I hope this story has been of interest, and I'd like to thank the organizers for arranging this fantastic virtual gathering under very difficult circumstances. I'd be happy to answer any questions.